I had a roommate in college that uh, lived in Peru. Uh, we visited a number of people there and we met a student that had these incredible notebooks of inventions. I had the idea there that if such an individual had access to a much greater world, had access to the libraries that I had access to, this kind of led to the idea of how could we create electronic books where you could walk around with basically a Library of Congress uh, in a single uh, device. We ended up with a tremendous group of students uh, working on this, including uh, Barrett Comiskey and uh, J.D. Albert. There was a, uh, a sense of you know, being at the frontier of innovation, working on problems that could be very important to the world, but where society had not yet gone. The questions weren't always even known. I think it's fair to say by all accounts that we are not the team you would have put together to actually make this work. So I was a mechanical engineering major, Barrett was a math major. Together the two of us did not really know what we needed to know, but we knew how to find the answers. And so we went out and talked to the right people, read the right patents and research papers, and were able to recreate things. I think you know this is a, a, a great example of how, how, how Joe and Albert and Kaminsky sort of came together, and, and that, that if, you, if you listen to their story, that process of getting there is really wonderful. JD and I complement each other very well. I was the scientist in the library, in the lab. Uh, he was the engineer uh, in the machine shop, building the machines to actually make electronic ink. We had this concept, this vision, these experiments. We believed it was possible, but we couldn't realize it. In any development of a new piece of technology or a new piece of science, there's going to be multiple obstacles and kind of your ability and willingness and desire to step over those obstacles, I think is the single most important ingredient for eventually getting across the finish line. We came in with the sense of how to attack the problem and to do so tenaciously. And that's really what yielded the right answers. Early one morning in January 1997, we took a microcapsule, put it on a slide in between two pieces of copper, put it under a microscope, and for the first time, we're able to see a particle moving back and forth. I think we all could tell very early on that e-ink had a lot of commercial potential. And so it was really clear that turning into its own company and developing the technology as the singularly focused goal of this company was the key for it being successful. What makes me most proud of what we did with bringing e-ink from an idea to reality is the fact that we did something that they told us couldn't be done. And that motivated us to make it happen. And that's innovation.